Coming up, one county is calling for cities to collaborate to conserve water. What's being done? And a solidarity rally here at UTRGV. Plus, how you can prevent a fire in minutes. KVAQ TV starts now. Hey, vaqueros, I'm Desiree Villanueva. And I'm Juan Carlos Marquez. This is the seventh fall edition of KVAQ TV. Today is Monday, October 14th. And at top of the newscast, Hidalgo County is actively working on increasing collaboration among cities for a drought contingency plan. Cities in Hidalgo County are required by the state to have a five-year drought contingency plan. Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez says that the county is trying to have all cities adopt similar water conservation guidelines. Cortez speaks about the potential water restrictions saying Hidalgo is 20% below water levels. So we have uh, six stages of which we call, you know, trigger points also. Uh, and, and, and the stage we're in right now is we're in a critical situation. It, it would go 15 or below, then that's going to come into the emergency, emergency uh, declaration situation. Cortez says desalination is a costly process which is not financially viable for the county. In the meantime, the county is in the process of receiving a grant from the Net Bank to study alternative sources of water. Last Monday, the Rio Grande Valley Youth Democratic Socialists of America held a Palestine-Lebanon Solidarity Rally. On the UTRGV Edinburgh Campus Chapel Lawn, the rally's main goal was to spread information on the Palestine and Lebanon conflicts through pamphlets and numerous speeches from event organizers. Dozens of attendees marched through the campus, waving numerous signs and chanting. President of the student organization, Jacob Becho, speaks on how he came to support Palestine and Lebanon. I had learned about the conflict like when I was a, when I was a teenager, and um, I didn't really know much about it for a while, but then I started like reading more about it, and I realized that like their story parallels, like the story of the Palestinians really parallels the story of the Native Americans in this country, how they were systemic, how they had their land systemically stolen from them, and eventually they faced genocide and persecution. The rally went on for at least two hours. University police and UTRGV officials were present. According to the U.S. Fire Administration website of 2022, 46% of fires are started in the kitchen. KVAQ TV spoke with the Edinburgh Fire Department for some safety tips. Our reporter, Perla Cortez, what can you tell us? Hey, I'm currently outside of a fire department here on Edinburgh in McIntyre Street, where we're here to find out what procedures students should follow during an emergency for Fire Prevention Week. Fire Prevention Week was observed from October 6th to October 12th, and here are a few things to watch out for to prevent a fire. Fire Chief of Edinburgh's Fire Department, Omar Garza, says if you have a candle in your home or dorm, make sure it is placed in a high area where fire is not spreadable. When cooking, make sure you're always attentive and turn off the stove when it is not being used. Garza speaks on what students should do during a fire emergency. Number one thing, know your surroundings, know your area, know your escape route, make sure you call 911, make sure you have a working smoke detector. Superheated gases travel up, so temperatures from up in the ceiling to down on the floor. So we always teach everybody, you know, stay low and crawl out and try to get to your meeting place and get outside as soon as you can. If you have a pan fire, then maybe you can just put the lid on and put the fire out. Uh, always avoid water when on a grease fire and you just want to cover it. Three UTRGV students were interviewed about fire safety. They all responded by saying UTRGV does not provide enough information on awareness or prevention when it comes to fire safety. I haven't seen anything about it and I follow a lot of their accounts so I've seen more police stuff but not really fire things. If there was a fire this is how you would get out, this is where you can go or just like just more precautions with it, and mainly if, like where's the first aid if you do catch on fire and you get a burn. I haven't heard much about fire prevention from the school, so I wouldn't be able to say that they do. So no, I don't. I don't think they do. I I have not heard anything of that here at UTRGV. I know there's courses like online that you could take, but they really don't talk about it like out loud. KVAQ TV tried to contact the Office of Environmental and Life Safety at UTRGV regarding safety procedures and awareness for the campus, but the department has not provided time for an interview yet. Garza adds if any student or individual requires a smoke detector, they can request a free installation online through cityofedinburgh.com. It takes 
I don't know, about 20, 30 seconds to apply for it. And then we'll give you a call, we'll set up the appointment, and the, the fire truck will go out there and we'll install a smoke detector for your, for your charge. When it comes to smoke detectors and fire extinguishers, make sure you check the expiration date before using. Fire extinguishers have the date stamp on the bottom of the can. Garza says smoke detectors should be replaced every 10 years. If the device makes high-pitched sounds, then it needs to be replaced. For KVQ-TV in Edinburgh, Perla Cortez. According to the U.S. Fire Administration, some fire extinguishers may be rechargeable. However, if the pressure is too low, they need to be replaced. As part of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, KVQ-TV interviewed a representative from Friendship of Women. Sexual assault outreach educator Rebecca Tortea says Friendship of Women is a nonprofit organization that offers a variety of services from legal advocacy to court accompaniment. On average, Friendship of Women provides a safe place to 450 women and children each year. We have counseling services and then we have our sexual assault program and our family violence program where we have crisis intervention and advocacy. Um, I think it's important that everyone knows that we're here and that we exist because we all we want to do is help so I would say to just not be afraid or ashamed to call us. Tortea says the organization provides a hospital companion as well as supportive housing and shelter. The Friendship of Women is located at 95 East Price Road in Brownsville. For more information about programs and services contact the 24-hour crisis hotline at 956 5444-7412. UTRGV sports fans, we've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. UTRGV Volleyball tallied its first home win of the season, and it lost last week after defeating the Northwestern State Demons 3-1 Thursday and losing 3-2 to the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders Tuesday. Both matches were conference games. During the match against the Islanders, UTRGV and Texas A&M Corpus Christi were neck and neck throughout the five sets. Head coach Todd Lowry says the team needs to focus on its strengths. Uh, I mean, obviously Corpus is a tough team for us to play against. Uh, some things they do cause us problems. So uh, I, th I think the big thing for us will just be go back to the things that we're good at. I think we ran away from some of the things that we're really good at. And uh, hats off to Corpus, they did a good job with the blocking scheme. So uh, we'll have to take a little bit better advantage uh, this weekend if teams choose to do the same thing again. Senior outside hitter Ilana Diaz's finished with 22 kills, 14 digs, 4 blocks, and 2 aces. Sophomore setter Isabella Costantini recorded a career-high 66 assists. For the Islanders, senior middle blocker Leah Stolfus garnered 15 kills, 4 blocks, 2 assists, and 1 ace, while fellow graduate setter Alex Hoglin had 54 assists and 11 digs. UTRGV's overall record on Friday was 7-8 and 3-2 in conference. UTRGV had a conference game Saturday against Texas A&M Commerce at home. Results for that game are available at GoUTRGV.com. That's all for our newscast. Make sure to watch us Monday through Friday on VCast monitors and on social media. For KVQ-TV, I'm Desiree Villanova. And I'm Juan Carlos Marquez. Peace up! up.